गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स टूडे विल डिस्कस द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ ह्यूमन ब्रेन फ्रॉम द चैप्टर्स कंट्रोल एंड कोऑर्डिनेशन फ्रॉम द ह्यूमन नर्वस सिस्टम विल डिस्कस द ह्यूमन ब्रेन ओके द ह्यूमन नर्वस सिस्टम कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ द मेनली थ्री पार्ट्स दैट इज द सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम the central nervous system consisting of again two parts that is the brain and the spinal cord okay so we will discuss about the uh, brain in this video then the peripheral nervous system it consisting of the different type of the nerves that is the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves and the third part that is the autonomous nervous system this autonomous nervous system it it is again divided into the two parts that is the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system okay now today we discuss about the brain okay brain it is the main important part of our body it is the vital organs in our body brain it is a present at the central axis of the body sorry it will be present at the in the head regions in the it is uh, present in the skull then the study of brain all the parts of the brain this branch of the biology is known as the encephalology okay and that encephalology it is the branch of the biology which deals with the study of all parts of the brain okay now brain it is vital organ and it is about the 1300 to 1400 g in its weight and 1300 to 1500 cc its volume its external structure now brain it is a vital organ so that its protection is necessary so this this part this brain is present in the brain box or it is also known as the cranium and the second part of this central nervous system that is the spinal cord the spinal cord it is present in the vertebral column sorry vertebral canal of the vertebral column and both are the part of the central nervous system which are present along the central axis on the dorsal sides of the body now brain it is a important organ so that it is it must be protected so it is covered by some protective membranes then this protective membranes are known as the meninges single it is known as the meninges and there are the three membranes so that these membranes are known as the meninges okay then this there are the three membrane or the three meninges first that is the dura mater this dura mater it is the outermost protective membrane and it is present inside the skull inside the skull and the, it is the outer outermost membrane it is the thick and the fibrous membrane and it is protective in function so that it is outermost so that it protect the brain then second protective membrane or second meninges is it is known as the arachnoid mater this arachnoid mater it is present below the dura mater and it it, can, it is a thin membrane and it is highly vascularized and so that it gives the nutrition it gives the nutrition to the this membrane and in between this two membrane that is the dura mater and the arachnoid mater there is a space and this space is known as the subdural space and this subdural space it contain the fluid this fluid is known as the serous fluid okay then this serous fluid it gives the nutritions to the uh, to that membranes then the third membrane that is the pia mater it is the thin membrane and it is uh, below this arachnoid mater and it uh, it is outermost to the part of the brain different part of the brain and then in between these two membrane that is the arachnoid mater and the pia mater this space is known as the arachnoid space okay and this arachnoid space 
it contain the fluid this fluid is known as the cerebrospinal fluid it is one of the important fluid this cerebrospinal fluid uh, it uh, it shows the uh, it shows the uh, about the 300 to 400 cc uh, its volume and uh, it is about the 1000 uh, 1005 its specific gravity and this cerebrospinal fluid it is the most important fluid it uh, it contain the different type of the cells and then uh, it is highly protective it protect the uh, it, it act as a shock absorber important thing that it absorb the shocks and it protect the brain from the external injuries then another function that the cerebrospinal fluid it uh, it prevent the desiccation of the brain so that these are uh, performing these two different functions of this uh, by the cerebrospinal fluid and this cerebrospinal fluid it is present in the different uh, ventricles ventricles means the cavity present in the brain so that the cerebrospinal fluid it will be present in that cavities means that in the ventricles uh, and in the vertebral canals of the spinal cord so this fluid cerebrospinal fluid it is the most important fluid next point now let us see about the now parts of the brain this part of the brain the study of the parts of the brain we know that it is known as the encephalogy then this brain complete brain it is divided into the three main parts fore brain mid brain and the hind brain okay fore brain it is also known as the prosencephalon okay then mid brain uh, this mid brain it is also known as the mesencephalon and the hind brain it is also known as the rhombencephalon okay now this fore brain it is the most important part and it is the largest part of the brain it occupies the much more part of the brain then this fore brain it is again divided into the three parts first part that is the olfactory lobes second part that is the cerebrum and the third part that is the diencephalon okay now olfactory lobes in case of the human beings it is not well developed but it is well developed in the other uh, other mammals like the dogs so here this olfactory lobe it is present on the in that side it is the model of the brain and uh, let us see its location of that olfactory lobes this olfactory lobes it is the, it is present in the form of the pairs and it is it consisting of the two parts that is the lobes rounded parts that is the olfactory lobes and the olfactory tract so these are the two lobes and then these are the tract okay so that this is the olfactory lobes which are present on that ventral side of that cerebrum or below the cerebrum okay and then the main main functions of this olfactory lobes it is related to the sense of the smell but in case of the human being this olfactory lobes will be not well developed uh, as compared to the other animals like the dog in the dog this olfactory lobes are very well developed so that its uh, its powers of that sense of the smell will be very much higher as compared to the human beings okay now next part that is the cerebrum cerebrum it is the largest part of the brain it occupies the about 80 per, 85% of the brain is that the cerebrum this is the in the model of the cerebrum here this is the part of the cerebrum this is the cerebrum it is the largest part of the brain and then again we will see that there are the number of the uh, number of the depressions uh, evolutions and the depression there are number of the uh, uh, valleys are present so that this uh, regis and the depression the regis are known as the gyri and uh, this depressions these are known as the sulci okay so uh, this uh, in that person 
person to person this uh, this gyri and sulca will be uh, uh, different so that the uh, the number of this gyri and sulca uh, it it is it is related to its intelligence means that much more gyri and sulca will be present that person will be uh, much more intelligent okay now this uh, complete cerebrum it is divided into the two parts by the sulci median sulci this part is known as the cerebral hemisphere this two parts this two part are known as the cerebral hemisphere cerebrum hemisphere hemi means half and sphere so that this it is divided into the half sphere so that it is known as the cerebral hemisphere okay now this cerebral hemisphere it is connect with each other with the it is connect with each other internally by the thick fibrous thick tract of the fibrous membrane so this is known as the corpus callosum okay this is known as the corpus callosum and then here again this cerebrum cerebrum it is again divided into the uh, different lobes there are the four different lobes are present four different lobes are present and again one of the there is another lobes uh, uh, there is the fifth lobe now let us see the four lobes so on the frontal side front side this lobe is known as the frontal lobes then at the lateral side it is known as the lateral lobes and then below this lateral lobe there is another lobe it is known as the temporal lobe and back side back side of this cerebrum this lobe is known as the occipital lobes okay and then again uh, at the central region means that this lateral lobe temporal lobe and the occipital lobe there is the another lobe will be present here where this three part will be connect with each other there is the another lobe will be present and this lobe is known as the insula so this is the fifth lobe i will mention uh, before so that these are the different part different types uh, different lobes are present in the cerebrum and then these lobes contain the different areas and these areas are related to the performing the different functions is that this region this regions are the in uh, this regions performing the different activities these these regions control the different activities okay now these areas means that this lobes contain these areas these are known as the functional areas in the uh, in that lobes so that here the different functional areas present in the cerebrum so first that is the frontal lobes in the frontal lobes we know that the the look uh, this is the frontal lobes okay this frontal lobes it contains the four different areas okay first that is the motor areas this motor areas it contain or it it control the all the voluntary actions or the voluntary movements of the body then the premotor areas this premotor areas it control the all the involuntary actions of the body or involuntary movements of the body then the association areas it control the both or it coordinate between the uh, it coordinate between the voluntary and involuntary actions of the body and the most important that is the broca's area this broca's area it is the again important areas in the uh, in the cerebrum and it control the that is the uh, it control the different part means that it control the different uh, activities of the body then the parietal lobes this parietal lobes are uh, it coordinate or control the different activities of the body and the temporal lobes it it also uh, maintain the pressures it also maintain the pressures uh, or the temperature or the taste it will be regulated these things will be regulated by the this temporal lobes and the last that is the occipital lobe this occipital lobes here and this regions it is related or it control or coordinate the 
that vision means that the the movement of the eyes or the uh, this uh, nose which will be connect to that visions and uh, all these activities or the all these controlling will be uh, coordinated by this occipital lobe means that any injuries to these regions so it will be directly affect on the vision so it is important and then uh, next that is the another area that is the retinix area retinix areas these areas are also present in the uh, cerebrum it is the fifth area and it is the most important area because that this area control the uh, that is the thoughts thoughts uh, it will be written by the hands so that this thought it will be uh, to the controlling that the into the speeches means that uh, it help in the conversion of the thoughts into the speeches this will be controlled by this area coordination will be takes place by this area so that these are the functional areas present in the cerebrum okay now next part of this four brain that is the diencephalon then this diencephalon it is present in between the this is the region of the diencephalon which is present below this carpus callosum so this regions it is known as the diencephalon it is present below the carpus callosum or the cerebrum and this diencephalon is consisting of the three parts that is epithalamus thalamus and the hypothalamus okay now epithalamus it is present here in the upper regions and that it is it is it form the floor of that diencephalon epithalamus it is the much more important and it form the upper regions upper regions of the floor or upper region of the not floor it is from the roof of that diencephalon and uh, it consisting of the reticular activating system will be connected to that regions so that this region will be very important then the next part that is the thalamus thalamus these are the two like two lateral this is the thalamus this region it from the two lateral wall of this di di uh, diencephalon means that this thalamus region it from the lateral regions of that uh, diencephalon and then uh, it contain the that glands that is the pineal gland thalamus region it contain the pineal gland it is most more much more important in the some of the organism uh, it is rudimentary but in case of the human being it, it is the most important because that it uh, perform it secrete the some of the important hormones that is the serotonin and melatonin serotonin uh, serotonin it is the sleeping inducing hormones which induce the sleep so that this pineal gland it is the much more important these are also uh, stimulate the reproductive hormones also so that this pineal gland will be much more important then the third part that is the hypothalamus hypothalamus it is the floor of the diencephalon it is much more important because that is hypothalamus this part it will be connect the brain to the endocrine system because that this from this floor of this hypothalamus there is the stalk will be present this stalk is known as the infundibulum and the, at the basal region of this infundibulum there is the small gland will be present and this gland is known as the pituitary gland pituitary gland it is the much more it is also known as the hypophysis so that this gland will be much more important because that it is the master endocrine gland and this master endocrine gland it secretes the important hormones which control the other endocrine glands and which also control the secretions of the other endocrine glands present in the in our body so that this pituitary gland it is a much more important gland and then this gland it will be connected to the hypothalamus hypothalamus it is the part of the brain so that in connection between the nervous system and the endocrine system by the this 
hypothalamus and with the help of this hypothalamus this is the connection hypothalamus it is the connection between the nervous system and the endocrine system and uh, indirectly first we, uh, previously this is right this pituitary gland it will be control the all the endocrine system all the endocrine glands of the body but now this pituitary gland is controlled by this brain so that the brain is, it is a much more important part then this is the about the pituitary glands which is present in the hypothalamus and uh, so that these are the parts of the diencephalon so it is about the part of this four brain that is the olfactory lobe cerebrum and the diencephalon okay now next part that is the mid brain okay mid brain it is present in between the fore brain and the hind brain and then it is divided into the two parts that is the corpora quadrigemina and the second part that is the cerebral peduncle and the crura it is also known as the crura cerebri okay corpora quadrigemina it consisting of the four two pair of the lobe means that there are the four rounded lobes are present here you will see that these are the four lobes okay four one two three four these are the rounded lobes and here two pair out of these two pairs that is that is the one is the superior colliculi and the inferior colliculi this these are the superior colliculi okay this superior colliculi it help or it related to the sense of the smell okay means that it is a related to the visions and then inferior colliculi it is related to the audi it, it, it is related to the auditory reflexes okay so that this uh, it is it control the hearing and the uh, superior colliculi it will be help to uh, help or to coordinate the uh, visions okay so these are about the super uh, corpora quadrigemina means that the uh, superior and the inferior colliculi constitute this corpora quadrigemina quadri means four that gemina means that the rounded lobes uh, it is related to the cerebrum so that this uh, mid brain so corpora quadrigemina then the next part that is the cerebral peduncle or it is also known as crura cerebris this crura cerebris or the cerebral peduncle these are the tract of the nervous fibers and this nervous fibers it connect the it connect this hind brain to the cerebrum so this is the main function of this cerebral peduncle cerebral peduncle it is the just tract of the nerve nerve fibers which connect this hind brain to the fore brain and then here uh, the cavity will be present okay this cavities are known as the third ventricle means that the cavity of the uh, brain these are known as the ventricle there are the different ventricle different uh, ventricles are present like that uh, here uh, the ventricle uh, ventricle or the cavity which will be present in the cerebrum it is known as the lateral ventricles then the the cavity which will be present in that uh, uh diencephalon it is known as the third ventricle and third ventricle will be connect with the uh, lateral ventricle by the small opening this opening is known as the foramen of monroe okay so and then the cavity which will be present uh, in the in the mid brain it is known as the fourth ventricles okay so that these are the different ventricles are present in the brain so this is about the mid brain then the last part that is the hind brain this hind brain it is also known as the rhombencephala and it is again divided into the three parts that is the pons varoli cerebellum and the medulla oblongata so let us see the first that is the cerebellum cerebellum it is the second largest part of the brain which is the first part that is the cerebrum cerebrum it is the largest part of the brain it occupies the 85% of uh, brain 
and the second that is the cerebellum this is the cerebellum it is present below the occipital lobes it is present on the posterior side of the brain and it it is the second largest part of the brain and it occupies the 11% of the brain and then this cerebellum it consisting of the different parts here in the sagittal sections in in the sagittal sections here this is the part okay then here uh in this part there is a tree like appearances okay this tree like network of the appearances it is known as the arborvitae this arborvitae it is the most important part and then this cerebellum it consisting of the again three parts that is the at the central region there is the two vermis are present sorry single vermis at the central region vermis will be present and the uh, on the lateral side two two lateral parts are known known as the cerebellum sorry cerebellar hemisphere okay in the cerebrum cere cerebral hemisphere but in the cerebellum that is the cerebellar hemisphere again so these are the two parts okay here now below this cerebrum sorry cerebellum there is the pons aroli will be present and below this this again pons aroli it is tract of this or uh, it is a tract of the nerve fibers and uh, it consisting of the nerve fibers which will cross with each other and uh, this nerve fibers bunch of the nerve fibers which will be cross with each other and then these regions will be controlling the this nerve fiber goes to the right and the left part of the body and so that these nerve fibers control the uh, that uh, controlling the right and the left side of the body okay now medulla oblongata this medulla oblongata it is the posterior most part of the brain and this medulla oblongata it is the much more important part of the brain because that this part this medulla oblongata it control the all the involuntary actions of the body like the respirations okay and then other other involuntary actions all these actions will be controlling by this medulla oblongata so this medulla oblongata will be very important and uh, uh, and any uh, any injuries to the this medulla oblongata there will be sudden death of that person causing the sudden death because that this medulla oblongata it directly uh, affect the respiration process means that command means that the respiration process will be immediately stop and that person will be uh, dead uh, due to the uh, injuries to this medulla oblongata and then this medulla oblongata it is it connect between the right mid brain and the spinal cord and so that this medulla oblongata uh, it will be connect to the spinal cord and this spinal cord it will be run through the vertebral canal of that vertebral column and then the spinal cord uh, it will be uh, up, reaches up to the last vertebra of the vertebral column and from this spinal cord there are the uh, nerves will be arises these nerves are known as the spinal nerves and this spinal nerves it will be reaches up to the peripheral region of the body so that the and again here from the brain there are the number of the nerves will be arises from each and the every regions means that each and every is that the from that olfactory lobes or the cerebellum or these in these regions the nerves will be arises and these nerves are known as the cranial nerves and this cranial nerves uh, it will be uh, reaches up to the peripheral regions of the body and then here that this cranial nerves and the spinal nerves uh, it carry the impulses from the different part of the body and all this cranial nerves and the spinal nerve these are constitutes the system this system is known as the peripheral nervous system this is the next part of that uh, this human nervous system and this will be discussed in the in the next video so uh, if you so it is about the human structure of the human brain and uh, uh,
if you like my video so uh, press like button any queries or the any suggestions write in the comment box okay and thank you very much